What we're going to work on in this video is how to resolve compound inequalities. The first thing we're going to do is try to resolve the logical operators and and or. So when we look at this picture, do we see something black and a dog? And the answer would be yes. Now, if I was to ask the same kind of question, except now I'm asking, in this picture, do we see something white and a dog? And the answer would be no. In order for something to be yes, and when you're using the logical operator and, it has to be both things. So and means both. Now, we can contrast that with the logical operator OR. In this picture, do we see something black or a dog? And the answer would be yes. The reason why is that you only have to be one of these things. You have to at least be black or a dog. Now, if we ask the next question, in this picture, do we see something white or a dog? And the answer also would be yes. So whenever we're using the word or, it means at least one. Whereas um, when we use the word and, both things has to be true. Okay. Now let's see how we use these logical operators in inequality statements. So if something is um, over two and over five, is there an easier way to say this? Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna graph both the left and right um, equation. So I can graph it like this. Now, this not, line denotes x equal two and this line denotes x equal five. So if I wanted to graph the inequality x is greater than two, I would put a big open circle around two, meaning that we can't touch two, and say everything to the right of two. If I were to graph the inequality x is greater than five, we would do a closed circle and then we would say everything to the right of five. Now we wanna look at these, we wanna look at these problems at three different intervals. So if we look at just this interval here, and I ask the question, because this is an and question, are both of these intervals shaded in? And the answer would be no, so we don't shade it in. The next question is, are both of these intervals, just, just right here, are both of these shaded in? And the answer would be no, so then we wouldn't shade in here either. And then on this last interval, are both of these shaded in? And the answer is yes. And we would take this ending condition. So this would be the end. So an easier way of saying this would be to say, um, this is five going to infinity. Um, an easier way of saying, um, of simplifying this is to say, this is the same as everything from five to infinity. And if we take a step back and we just think about it, if something has to be bigger than two and bigger than five, then it has to be bigger than five. A number like three or four would not satisfy both conditions. Okay. Now, let's look at this next question. And let's first graph x is greater than two. So x is greater than two um, here and everything to the right of it. And then let's graph everything um, less than or equal to five. And then we would have to fill this in because we have an equal sign. And then let's play the same game. When we have the logical operator and, we're asking for what interval 
are both of these statements true? So when I look at over here, are both of these intervals shaded in? The answer is no, so we don't shade it in. Over here, if I ask you, are both of these shaded in? And the answer is yes. So we shade it in, and we take this ending condition. And over here, when I look at just this interval, are both of these shaded in? And the answer is no. So a simpler way of saying everything bigger than 2 and less than 5 would be to say everything between 2 and 5. Okay. Now, here's the last one. We're looking at 2 and 5. So first, let's graph on this number line, um, x is less than 2, x is greater than 5, and then let's ask the question, for this interval here, are both of these shaded in? And the answer is no, so we don't shade it in. And then for over here, we ask ourselves, are both of these intervals shaded in? The answer is no, so we don't shade it in. And on this last interval, we say, are both of these shaded in? The answer is no, so we shade nothing. So to describe this um, um, nothing, we say undefined. Meaning that there is no sol solution that satisfies um, this requirement. Now, if I were studying this, just know that there's only three ways I can ask you an and question. I can either ask it, um, let's see. So if, if we look at all three graphs, I can, look, I can ask you this question where both lines are going in the same direction, both lines are going toward each other, and on this case, both lines are going away from each other. So if you know these three cases, basically you can do um, every version of an and problem I give you. The only thing that'll change is basically these numbers. Okay. Now, let's work on or, qu or questions. Bring that down. Now, or is different from and. And um, meant both. Or means at least one. So what we're going to do with these problems is we're going to graph them in the same way. Okay, we have x is equal to 2, x is equal to 5. So first let's graph x is greater than 2 and then x is greater than 5. So x is greater than 2, x is greater than or equal to 5. And when we're looking at the or, we're going to ask ourselves, for this first interval, is at least one of these shaded in? And the answer is no. For the middle interval, is at least one of these shaded in? And the answer is yes. This one is shaded in, because we're saying at least one, not both. So this is shaded in. And then for this last interval, is at least one shaded in? And the answer is yes. So then our answer is everything from 2 to infinity. Now, for this question, we're looking at two inequalities that point toward each other. We have x... Um, Let's see, here's my x equal 2, x equal 5. So first let's graph x is greater than 2. And then let's graph x is less than equal to 5. And then let's do the or. Is at least one of these intervals shaded in? And the answer is yes, this one is. 
is at least one of these shaded in? And the answer is, yeah, both of them are shaded in. And over here is at least one of these shaded in? And the answer is yes. So we have an answer of negative infinity to infinity. Any number you pick would be a, a solution. So just like the and problems, there's basically three ways I can ask you this question. I can ask you it with the lines going together in the same direction, or the lines pointing toward each other and crossing, or I can ask you in the way in which the lines point away from each other. So let's do this last one. So let's graph x is less than 2. Let's graph x is greater than or equal to 5. And then let's ask us the or question. Is at least one of these shaded in in this interval? And the answer is yes. Is at least one of these shaded in? No. And is at least one of these shaded in? And the answer is yes. So now we have a problem where we have basically an interval that is disconnected. Um, the way we write our solution to this is we put a union. This means that combine this interval and this interval together. Be careful that we always go from small to big, right? Negative infinity is smaller than 2. 2 is smaller than 5, 5 is smaller than infinity. Okay. Now, let's look at a full-blown test question. So if I give you a full-blown test question, um, I'm going to make you um, isolate the x for the inequality first. So in this case, we'll subtract 3 from both sides. Okay. Now over here, we're going to divide both sides by negative 2. Now be careful. Anytime you um, divide both sides by a negative number, you're going to flip the inequality. Okay. Now, one of the things you have to be careful about is that you have to make sure that the numbers are in the correct order. Negative 7 is smaller than 2. So you have to make sure on our number line that minus 7 comes first. And even though it seems obvious and trivial when you're stressed out during the test, that's probably the most uh, likely mistake is where you put the negative 7 after the 2. All right. So first let's graph x is greater than 2. I'm sorry, we'll make that x is greater than 2. And then over here we'll graph x is greater than minus 7. And then we'll look at the logical operator. In this case, the logical operator is AND. What AND um, implies is both. So then we ask, go through the three intervals and ask ourselves, in this first interval, are both of them shaded in? And the answer is no, so we don't shade this in. Are both of these sh shaded in? And the answer is no, so we don't shade this in. Are both of these shaded in? And the answer is yes, so then we shade it in. So our answer is from 2 to infinity. Thank you for watching this video.